Hey YouTube, welcome back to a brand new Animal Crossing New Horizons video. Today we are discussing forced perspectives in New Horizons, as well as quickly going over step by step how to design one. So without further ado, let's get straight into today's video. So the latest layout design that seems to be trending right now for New Horizons is what's known as forced perspective, so I thought we'd quickly talk about it a bit before designing one of our own. So forced perspective is basically nothing more than an optical illusion where objects around us are made to appear larger or smaller, manipulating our visual perception and essentially tricking our brains into thinking things are closer or further away than they actually are. A classic real world example would be a photo of someone propping up the Leaning Tower of Pisa. I'm sure we've all seen one of those. Now here is a great example from a very talented Reddit user who used the technique in New Horizons and started the trend. This makes use of the lighthouse and the model camper to trick our minds and make it seem like this area is further away and lower down from the island than it actually is. It's really cool. Another one of my favorites is this one that's more of a roped off viewing area looking down giving their area even more depth, again creating a really cool area below the cliffs. And finally we have this one which adds a cool looking road along the bottom of the cliffs to really reinforce the scale of the area. So I think this gives you an idea of what forced perspective is and how it can be used in New Horizons. Now all three of these examples really make you feel like you're super high up looking down onto a far away tourist area. So with these in mind, we're going to take inspiration from each and design our own. Of course, I'll leave the links to these in the comments, so please be sure to check them out. Anyway, let's get to it. Number one, location. In order to design our own forced perspective area, the first thing you're going to need to do is find a decent location which will most likely be one of the large rocks at the back of your map. These are the areas that you can place furniture on. This step is as easy as preparing the area or cleaning up all the furniture items you may already have there. You basically want a blank canvas to start with and I learned that the hard way and had to clean up a whole bunch of trees halfway through. Number two, building up. The illusion of forced perspective works better the higher up you are. So here we need to start adding as many cliff layers as we can and begin building out some cliffs. We're going to make use of all three levels so it really looks like we're looking down on this area. I found for the best result each cliff needs to be at least two tiles away from the previous. This is so when we look down we can just see the cliff layer below which helps create the illusion of a steep drop. At this point you can also add some curves to the cliff edges to make them look nice. And as you can see, after lots of cliff building, it's already starting to look like an area that's further away. Number three, large items. Next, we need to start adding some large items that aren't really to scale when you stand next to them. The best ones to use are the lighthouse and the turbine. This is because when you stand next to them normally, they're much smaller than you'd expect. But when placed further away, the scale begins to look a little bit more realistic. Once back up the cliff and looking down on these items, it's already giving us a real sense of distance, which is super cool. Number four, road. Now one of the best things I've seen added to help trick the mind is something that will give the entire area a relatable scale, and that's a road. Everyone knows how big roads are, so when we see one, it kind of puts everything else in proportion. So we need to design a simple road design and place it on the ground in front of the rock. Here you can see I did a little road with some center lines and a cool little crossing just to give it some more character. But don't worry about the final design because these tiles can always be adjusted later without the need to relay them. And there we have it, once the road is designed and laid, it's starting to look fairly realistic. Number five, scale. This whole area already looks cool, but we need more objects to start building out this area. The items that are mostly suited for this are definitely the camper van models that you get when linking Pocket Camp to New Horizons. Because of these, another popular feature seems to be some parking spaces, which is pure genius. It takes a bit of a trial and error, but again, draw a couple of lines and display them on the floor to create nice little parking areas. This is of course where we can place the camper van models to make it look like a car park. And because of how small they are when placed next to the large lighthouse, they all look a normal size. Number six, details. 
Moving on, we need to add extra details to make this forced perspective environment look realistic. I mean, there's no real correct way to do this, and really this is just one massive experiment because any tiny object would work, but I chose to add a beehive because from a distance, it kind of looks like a boathouse or a tourist center or something, and again, fits in well with the scale we're going for. I think it's a good idea to also add more camper vans to the road too, just so it looks like the road is actually being used. Number seven, trees. Now we've still got to design the tops of the cliffs a bit, but before we do, the more details we can add to the rock area, the cooler and more realistic it will look. I really wanted to add some trees along the road so it looked more natural. So a good way to do this is literally plant the smallest saplings you can find. Because when you plant them and then get back to the top of the cliffs and look down on the saplings, they look like fully grown trees, which is super awesome. Number eight, foreground. Now whilst this looks pretty much done, it's time to add normal sized foreground objects at the tops of the cliffs to add even more depth. You'll see it once it's complete, but it really helps pull the rock area in the background away from the eye, adding to the perspective. You can use whatever you like, but fences work well, because again, we all know how big a fence is, so it's easy for our minds to see the illusion when we have something to relate to. I chose to add walls either side of my cliffs, which we can continue to develop more later. Number nine, foreground details. We are of course nearing the end of the forced perspective and it looks really awesome. But as always, the more details you can add here to help either set the scale or make it look more realistic, the better. So I chose to drop the items we picked up at the start and recreate my original viewing area, but at the top of the cliff. Of course, another nice detail in New Horizons is laying down a path, which helps separate the foreground from the rest of the grass. Number 10 finishing touches. And that's pretty much it really. Now it's just a case of customizing it or designing it however you like and maybe adding a few more details. I opted for adding a rope fence because it gives some security to those at the actual viewpoints, but it's small enough. It doesn't really take away or block the view we just created. And there we have it. This is my awesome looking forced perspective area. I'm actually really proud of it. And even as I was making it, it surprised me how it was tricking my eyes. It definitely came out way better than I imagined. Of course, this is inspired by those who already posted theirs online. So thank you all again for sharing those. If you guys decide to make one of these too, be sure to tweet me a screenshot. I'd love to see it. Anyway, what do you think of this forced perspective technique? Do you like the look of it? Or are you not really a fan? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Anyway, for now, that pretty much wraps up this video. If you're an Animal Crossing fan, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any New Horizons news. Until then, I'd like to give a special thank you to this channel's Patreon supporters, you guys rock. Don't forget to head over to our Discord server too. And of course, if you got this far in the video, please comment Lighthouse. Just to let me know you did, that would be super awesome. And please be sure to include what kind of cool areas you have designed in New Horizons. I'd love to know. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it entertaining. Please be sure to leave a like if you did. Thanks for watching, I hope you have an amazing day, stay safe, and I'll see you in my next video. Peace.